Many chemical reactions take place in a series of steps. We can use a chemical equation to show the overall reaction. However, reaction mechanisms show the series of steps by which all the bonds break and form in the overall chemical equation. We can think of an analogy for differentiating between a chemical equation and a reaction mechanism. If we think about movies, we can think about a chemical equation as being the overall big picture. For example, they built a big ship and it sank. However, the mechanism is more like the detailed plot of the movie. It was the biggest ship they ever made. There was a rich girl and a poor guy. There was some fancy jewel involved. Someone said they felt like the king of the world. They hit an iceberg and on and on and on. So the mechanism shows the details about what happens in the overall chemical equation. Let's look at an example. We can talk about the chemical reaction with the equation H2 gas reacts with two ICL gas molecules to produce two HCl gas and one I2 gas. However, if we're interested in how the actual bonds break and form, we can write a mechanism for this overall equation. Perhaps the first step involves one H2 molecule reacting with one ICL molecule to produce HI and HCl. In a second step, the HI reacts with a second ICL molecule to produce HCl and I2. These two steps are called elementary steps. Elementary steps cannot be broken down into simpler steps. We also notice in this mechanism that we have the HI molecule as a product in an early step and then it's used up or consumed in a later step. We call such species reaction intermediates. Reaction intermediates are not part of the overall chemical equation. In most chemical reactions, one elementary step is slower than the others. This slow step is called the rate determining step. The reaction can never go faster than the slowest rate determining step. The rate law for the overall equation is the same as the rate law for the rate determining step. In previous videos, we said that the rate law for an overall equation is not based on the stoichiometry of the overall equation. However, if we have elementary steps, the rate law for each elementary step is based on the stoichiometry of the reactants in that elementary step. So in other words, if we had an elementary step, A plus P goes to products, the rate law for this elementary step would be rate equals K times the concentration of A times the concentration of B, since in the elementary step, there is a coefficient of 1 for each of those reactants. Let's apply what we just learned about rate determining steps and reaction mechanisms to a real world problem. In this case, we have a reaction we've seen before where we have one mole of NO2 gas reacting with one mole of CO gas to produce one mole of NO gas and one mole of CO2 gas. We should recall that the rate law for this equation is rate equals K times the square of the concentration of NO2. The mechanism for this reaction involves two steps. In the first step, one molecule of NO2 reacts with another molecule of NO2 to produce NO3 and NO. In the second step, NO3 reacts with CO to produce NO2 and CO2. Based on what we've been given so far, which elementary step is the rate determining step? Also, is there a reaction intermediate in this mechanism? And if so, what is it? In order to answer this question, we recall that the rate law for the overall equation is equivalent to the rate law for the slow step. The rate law for the overall equation has NO2 to the second power which implies that the slow step in the mechanism has two molecules of NO2 involved. In this case, the only step in the mechanism 
that has two molecules of NO2 reacting is the first step in the mechanism. So we know that in this case, the first step in the mechanism is the slow rate determining step. Now, what about a reaction intermediate? We recall that a reaction intermediate does not show up in the overall equation, but it's produced in an earlier step and then it's used up in a later step. If we look at the two reaction mechanism steps, or the two elementary steps, we see that NO3 appears in both of the elementary steps, but it does not appear in the reaction equation. Furthermore, NO3 is formed in the first step and it's consumed in a later step. Therefore, NO3 is an intermediate in this reaction. By now, you should be able to differentiate between chemical equations and reaction mechanisms. You should also be able to describe elementary steps. You should be able to identify reaction intermediates in a reaction mechanism. You should also be able to write rate laws for elementary steps in a reaction mechanism. Finally, you should be able to describe rate determining steps.